here we have footage that was shot with a handheld camera meaning that it's not going to be very stable so if I play the footage I would see that the camera is shaking a little bit now let's say that the client asks for the replacement of this sign here so my job would be to create a new sign in Photoshop and then find a way to have the sign follow the motion of the original and that's called motion tracking so I have a new composition which has the same size as my original footage to do that you would drag your footage onto a new composition here and you would create a new composition having the same size as the footage in case that was required all right and um, here I have another layer which will replace the original over here all right so let's hide this for now and let's see how we can track the motion of this sign over here so I'm gonna zoom over this area now whenever I'm motion tracking I need to go to the individual layer and not at the composition level so I'd have to double click on LA here and that would take me inside the layer this is where I track the motion and then I would see the result back in my composition now let's start with the simplest case and then move on to a more advanced uh, solution what I need to do is track the motion so I'm gonna click on track motion once I do that I get a track point this is called a track point and here I have the area to be tracked and then I have the search area around it so I place the area or the track point over a place in my footage that is not obstructed by something else all throughout the movie so for example if I try to track let's scrub the movie from here if I try to track let's say this area I would notice that at some point it will no longer be visible because it's obstructed by the car so the tracking data will be very uh, unstable so I cannot track this most probably I would have to track something around this area because first of all that's what I want to track and second of all it doesn't get obstructed by anything all throughout another thing I can track are the red points here actually we have to do several tracks to see which one gives us the best result because you're never gonna get the best result right away you have to try several points several areas and then decide what is the best result so let's start by tracking here this corner so I'm gonna grab my track point and go down you see that when you move the track point you get a zoom over the area that you're over that way you can precisely place your track point so I want to place it at the corner which I did so let's see what happens once I track this point or this area what I have to do is click on analyze forward because I'm at the beginning of my movie and then this point or this area will be tracked so if I zoom over that's the motion that this area took over the length of the movie right and this motion is converted to keyframes which I can apply to something else for example the red layer let's do that now so we track this and I'm gonna click on edit target and select whichever layer I want to apply the motion to in my case it's the reds dot jpeg layer I'll press ok once I hit apply they ask me do you want to apply this only in X only in Y or in X and Y in most cases it's gonna be X and Y so I'll press ok and now I'm taken back to my composition and if I look at my red layer the position of that has keyframes applied if I zoom out I'm gonna see the red layer somewhere so if I hit play okay I can't see it now because it's probably away so let's um, select this okay it's hidden that's why I didn't see it mistake all right and here if I hit play now 
I will see that this layer is moving along with the motion of the camera. All right? So that's a good thing. I need to scale it down. Can I scale it after striking the motion? Yes, I can because I didn't apply any keyframes to the scale channel. I just applied the keyframes to the position so far. So I can scale this down. Zoom over and hit play. And you see that, yes, it does move along very nicely. The problem is that it's not located in the right place. So let's see what we can do with this. One solution would be to change the position of the anchor point. So horizontally and vertically. Let's see now. OK, that's good. And um, I would actually scale it up a little bit. And then I would uncheck or unlock both X and Y so that I can scale it in Y. Let's see now. OK, good. But it doesn't really take the form of the original sign. It doesn't take the form of the original sign. All right, so I'm going to zoom over. And I want it to take the form of the original sign. In Photoshop, what would be the tool that I would use? Bravo, it would be the Distort tool. Here we have something similar to the Distort tool. So I'd go to Effect, Distort, and the tool that I want to use is called Corner Pin. The Corner Pin would actually let you change the perspective of the object by dragging out these points. So now I have a perfect alignment between the original and the new one. So if I hit play now, there you go. I have the new sign moving perfectly along the original. So that's striking just the position. In this case, I didn't have any rotation, so it worked fine without adding rotation and scale data. In case I was zooming in or I was rotating the camera, I would have to do that. But in this case, it worked very nicely. Another thing I can do is um, scale up just a bit, maybe numerically, so that I cover what's underneath, say 21.5. And um, that's it, I think, 21.3. And that's my result. Next, we're going to see other tracking examples.